In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a repository so that you can back up and restore your data if needed. It does assume that you already have a Bitbucket account as well as the Source Tree app. You can find the links in the bottom of the video if you uh, need either of those. So if you do need to still set those up, go ahead and pause the video and take a moment to do so. Okay, so now that you're good to go, the first thing you'll do is create a repository. You can either click this link right here when I'm highlighting, or you can click repositories in the top left, and then create a repository. You can name it whatever you want, it doesn't really matter, but you do want to make sure that this is a private repository is checked. Uh, keep it at git, and there are some advanced settings we're not going to really mess with that right now. This is just a really quick to the point video. So go ahead and click Create Repository. And you'll end up at a page like this. Um, so you have Create a Git Ignore, which I'll talk about later, and Create a README. The README just essentially is what it says. Uh, when you download anything that has a README, it suggests that you read it first. It's information about what you're downloading. Uh, we're going to do the Git Ignore later, so let's go ahead and create a README now. I'm going to leave it at the default and just go ahead and hit commit. And this is a uh, commit message, essentially what you what you leave as comments for your changes. So I click commit on that and you got this little pop up here. Okay, so now we need to pull this down to your hard drive. So right up here in the top right where it says HTTPS and there's a little link click it make sure it's all highlighted and I'm going to hit copy I'm going to jump over in the source tree now your source tree will have more white over here um, I'm just hiding some projects that I'm still working on so ignore that for now the first thing we're going to do is hit clone slash new and we're going to paste what we copied in the source path slash URL and nothing will happen until you click destination path. It's going to check it to make sure it's a valid path. And you'll get a pop up here with your uh, Bitbucket login and you'll have to enter your password. This is a one time thing. You would not have to do this every time you make a repository. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on my local hard drive as a bit copy. Uh, this is a bookmark. It's just going to be a little tab up here. You can name it whatever you want. And then hit clone. And it's going to download the files from your repository to your local hard drive, which right now is mostly nothing. It's just going to be the README. Um, so I hit log history down on the bottom. And you can see the initial comment that says README.md created, so and so. Uh, so if I go down here, you can see where I created it and all that's in there is the readme and the git folder and uh, I'll talk about the git folder later so right now I'm gonna go to my local copy I'm gonna highlight everything I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna paste it in the bit copy now notice what I have in here I have the build folder the git ignore uh, that's dot git ignore there's no file extension on it it's just a screenshot from Guild Wars a text file and the readme now if you hop over here you have uncommitted changes that just popped up in source tree uh, so if you highlight it you can see under here unstaged files these are files that have been changed but have not been uploaded uh, you'll notice that the build folder isn't in here that's because in the git ignore file it excludes the build folder uh, the git ignore is essentially all the files you do not want to back up and all of these files are uh, build files or temporary files generated by Unity. So if you want to copy this, which I will go ahead and put it below the video as well, you can do so and put it in your own git ignore file. So to save these changes, the first thing you have to do is uh, first stage the files you want to back up. This is, uh, you can either select them all one by one, or you can select individual ones and hit stage selected, or you can just hit stage all. And once they're up here, it means they're pending to be updated or pushed to your repository. So once you do that, you go to File Status, and you just type in Notes. It doesn't really matter, um, whatever you feel. Once you have your notes, you'll go over here to Commit. 
and you'll see this little number pop up above the push symbol. Uh, but if you go over to log history, you'll see that this now has your notes. So what we basically did is we made a, um, well, well it's called a commit, but it's basically a local confirmation of what you want the changes to be. But in order to get those over to the repository online, you have to press the push button. Uh, so by default, you're going to see master checked and remote branch master selected. Uh, generally, select all is checked. Push all tags is checked. Force push is not clickable. And I will tell you more about that later. So I'm going to go ahead and hit push. It's going to refresh. Okay, well, it should be refreshing. There we go. And uh, now it's up there, and you notice the push symbol's gone. So the force push could be useful is if you're having issues with something not going through. Sometimes if you mix up files and they differ, um, they differ too much from your remote copy or your your repository, you'll get a bunch of errors, and you can do a force push to fix that. So to do so, you'll go to Tools, Options, and then go to the Git tab, Enable Force Push and then hit OK. So the next time you push you'll see the option that you can actually check force push. Um, be warned though that whenever you force push it will overwrite any any previous um, unconfirmed changes. So let's say you have two people working on a project and they worked on the uh, main scene but you also worked on the main scene. Um, what can cause a conflict is if you don't pull their update before pushing yours and you can get around that by doing a force push but that will overwrite their changes so just keep that in mind so that's all you have to really do to back up your data um, so whenever you make new changes I'll just show you let's add a new text okay and go back to source tree there it is gonna go ahead and stage it simple comment hit commit and go ahead and push it again and I'm gonna go ahead and do a force push there's nothing that can really be destroyed here so just show you it'll give you a warning it says it's a destructive operation basically why I described earlier go ahead and hit yes if you're okay with that and you're good to go all right so let's say uh, you accidentally ruin this file and there you go that's what you have so there's two ways to recover it and you see that it wants me to push the changes but you don't want to because that's that's a bad file now uh, so one way is you can go to the latest change when you know the file was good uh, we know this one was good so you can select it right click and you can go to reset to this commit and if you read that basically it says confirm that you're gonna reset your local copy to the copy in this commit which is one we have highlighted right here if I hit OK it's gonna replace that so I'm gonna go ahead and do so you notice it changed If I go back and it's back to normal the other way you can do it is uh, go into your repository and I'm going to go to the main bit bucket page here so we can start over from the beginning. This is the repository we created. I'm going to go ahead and click tutorial. I'm going to go to the branch, select master, and uh, which branch you're working in may vary if you're working with a group, but if you're alone it should almost always be master. Uh, so then I'm going to go ahead and hit view source there's the file I can just right click and save link as if I wanted to save it to my hard drive now if you need to um, let's say you make a big mistake uh, I deleted that on accident messed up this file as well and to make matters worse you pushed all that. So 
I'm going to go ahead and push these changes real quick and just show you. I'm not going to use force push. You should rarely ever need to use that. So I'm going to go to log history. Big mistake. Okay. So this file is not right. This file is not right. Uh, the screenshot file, the image file is gone. What you're going to do is you're going to take the last known good copy, which would be this one right here that we have highlighted. You're going to right click it. I'm going to go reset current branch to this commit. And we're going to change it to hard. Hard is going to replace everything on your uh, local hard drive. And uh, that's essentially what we want to do in this case. So I'm going to go and hit OK. It's giving you a warning saying the same thing I just told you. And it's overriding files as we speak. You'll notice that this is fixed, this as well, and that the image is back. Um, so you still have this right here. And this is going to stay there until you override it. Um, your previous mistake is still there, but it's not that much of a problem because you have your local copy working fine. So I'm going to open up this file, make a change to it, and you'll see it up here now. It shows that that file was changed. I'm going to go ahead and stage it gonna hit file status I already typed it up but fixed big mistake commit and push and you're gonna ignore the poll for now because if you hit the poll it's just gonna pull down your mistake again so I'm gonna hit push I'm gonna leave this unchecked because I'm gonna show you what I was talking about earlier so force push is gonna remain unchecked so go ahead and hit push you're gonna get an error it's because as I mentioned it does not match up with what's on the remote repository uh, so I'll go ahead and hit close, hit force push this time, hit push, hit yes to confirm, and it's going to work. And you'll notice your big mistake is gone. Uh, so like I said before, that data is permanently gone. So make sure you use force push properly. But now, if I were to show you, everything is set up properly everything's still there uh, if I add even more information I can go ahead and stage this and any future issues will be gone and I don't have to use a force push and that's pretty much it um, there's a lot more to it for example you may have noticed the different types of resets they're all little they all do something a little different um, there's reverse commit, uh, which if you just, for example, make one mistake and you don't have to uh, go back several versions, you can do reverse commit and you hit OK. And it's just going to undo that one and then you hit push. But there's many different features. I just wanted to show you the basics so you can get up and running. Uh, once you're set up, for the most of the time, all you're going to be doing is work on your project enter some notes, hit commit, and then push them. Uh, the only time you'll be using the other stuff is if you accidentally just draw files, and it's, it's not that hard to recover them. So it's good to have, it's quick, it's convenient. Uh, it's a remote backup so you don't have to worry about you know, losing your hard drive or whatever it may be.